Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Tasir Sadiq, uh, and my presentation is Common Agents of Foodborne Illnesses in the United States. My instructor is Professor Rebel Rebecca Lustig, and I'm a Fall 2020 cohort 17. Uh, let me start my uh, presentation by giving you an overview of the history of food safety in the United States. The concept of food safety started early on uh, with the increase in trade with the neighboring towns and cities. The government at that time decided to have some control uh, mechanism for the quality of food that entered the country. So uh, the history uh, starts from 1862 to 1993. I've put some important dates with some important uh, information about the history. And uh, I'll not be able to elaborate the historical events in detail due to some time constraints. So uh, the presentation is itself, uh, it shows the important dates and events. Moving on to uh, slide three, uh, I'll start with norovirus. It's a highly virulent virus. It spreads quickly in the elderly, immunocompromised, and in those who reside in long-term care facilities. Uh, going on to hepatitis A, Hepatitis A is a vaccine-preventable infection of the liver. It spreads fecal-orally contaminated surfaces. If you touch the contaminated surfaces that have been touched by an infected person, uh, the symptoms are discoloration of the eye, uh, yellowish discoloration of the eye, dark urine, nausea, vomiting, and itching all over the body. Uh, coming to salmonella, salmonella has two types, which are very common, enteritis and typhimurium. Uh, salmonella causes 1.35 million infections and 25,500 hospitalizations in the U.S. annually. The foods that are commonly implicated in the uh, transmission are poultry, eggs, and milk. Shigella. Uh, this pathogen is transmitted by touching contaminated surfaces and spreads by sick people, fruits and vegetables, uh, recreational waters, and swimming in contaminated lakes. Clostridium perferenges. This organism causes 1.5 million illnesses each year. In the United States, uh, found in, it is found in soil and intestines of the humans and animals. Common food contamination contaminants are beef, poultry, gravies, pre-cooked foods. Outbreaks are usually seen in cafeterias, institutions, hospitals, prisons, nursing homes, and food gatherings, catering areas. Staphylococcal food poisoning. Staphylococcal food poisoning can grow in a wide range of temperatures from 7 degrees to 48 degrees Celsius in a pH of 7 to 7.5 and with a salinity of 15%. It can spread through beef, pork, mutton, poultry, and eggs. Clostridium uh, perforans, botulinum. Now, uh, Clostridium botulinum is usually caused by ingestion of preformed toxins. Canned foods, honey, juice, germination of the spores produces a very uh, dangerous neurotoxin, which can uh, lead to uh, descending paralysis and floppy baby syndrome in infants. Listeriosis. Now, listeriosis is caused by contaminated, uh, by uh, consuming contaminated raw milk, smoked fish, processed vegetables, and uh, there is also transmissional transmission of the listeria, uh, which can lead to abortion in uh, females and even in animals, mainly in animals. E. coli. There are four types of uh, E. coli, the enterohemorrhagic E. coli, which produces a virotoxin that causes uh, diarrhea, a bloody diarrhea, and hemolytic hemorrhagic syndrome. The strain that has been involved is uh, known as the 0157H7. Now, there are other strains are enterotoxigenic E. coli, which is also known as the traveler's diarrhea, the enteropathogenic E. coli, which causes diarrhea in infants, and then the enteroinvasive E. coli, which invades the, the lining of the gut, a vibrio. Now, the vibrio causes, a, produces a cholera toxin, which causes profuse rice water diarrhea. It leads to severe dehydration. It causes around 80,000 illnesses in the United States and 100,000 deaths in the United States. 100 deaths, not 100,000. Now, brucellosis. Now, brucellosis is transmitted by cows, sheep, goats, pigs, and it usually affects people who are involved with uh, uh, farmers, uh, like farmers, like veterinarians, hunters, slaughterhouse workers, and lab personnel. Talking about uh, parasites and toxins, the first toxin that I'm going to discuss is Trichinella spiralis. It's found in undercooked uh, meat, especially uh, pork. Uh, the symptoms are usually abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, myositis, eye edema, cardiac, and neurological symptoms. Tinea saginata. This is the beef tapeworm and tinea solium, which is the pork tapeworm. Infestations occur after ingestion of undercooked uh, beef and pork. Amanita phylloids. It's also known as the death cap mushroom. 
The toxic mushroom contains uh, chemicals such as phalloidin and alphamentin, which cause a, a breakdown of protein synthesis and also leads to cell death. Symptoms are nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, cramps, and after about two to four days, renal and liver failure develop. Aflatoxin. This is a fungal toxin produced by asparagus, uh, asparagus flavors. It is present on nuts, grains, peanuts, uh, which cause uh, liver damage. Ergot. It's a fungus that is produced on a rye grain, uh, ciguatera fish poisoning. Ciguatera fish poisoning uh, is caused by consumption of large uh, reef, uh, reef dwelling fish such as barracuda and red snapper. Symptoms are uh, hot and cold flashes, muscle pain and GI symptoms. Scombroid. Scombroid is a toxin that is present on the flesh of tuna and mackerel fish. It causes flushing and burning sensation in the throat. Tetrodotoxin. Toxin is produced by eating puffer fish and symptoms are seen in less than 30 minutes. Symptoms of vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, paralysis, and respiratory paralysis are seen. Shellfish poisoning. Now, oyster, clam, scallops contaminated with saxitoxin, a nerve poison produced by dinoflagellates. It leads to GI symptoms, numbness in the mouth, and extremities, difficulty speaking, and weakness. Now, on the slide five, I'll discuss point of contamination. The contamination usually starts in the farms. These animals' farms are crowded, unsanitary places. Disease spreads quickly from one animal to the other. Slaughtering. Now, uh, pathogens require, uh, they spread quickly when they come in contact with blood, flesh, hide of animals. That's how they spread. Harvesting. Animal products get mixed uh, with each other so that pathogens are easily transmitted from one batch to the other. Storage. Uh, when these packaged foods are not stored immediately and they are allowed to stay in an environment uh, which is beneficial to the growth of bacteria, so they spread. Transport. Refrigerated food is left on a do loading dock or a transport truck for a long time in a warm weather will lead to the growth of these bacteria. Preparation. Now, if sick workers, uh, food workers stay uh, on a job while handling food, they can spread germ by touching the food. Also, contamination can occur during refrigeration by spilling or a leaky, uh, leaky juices that go and infest and infect other uh, food items. Now, uh, I'm going on to the next temperature and refrigeration. Foods like meat, poultry, seafood, eggs that require refrigeration should never be allowed to sit in room temperature for more than two hours. Cross contamination can happen if a cook uses a cutting board to cut one item, one infected item like chicken, and then uses the same knife to cut other produce so that the, there is cross contamination. Cleaning and hand washing. Storage areas and areas of refrigeration should be cleaned regularly and checked for any spills, odors, infestations. Hands should be washed uh, for more than 20 seconds before and after handling food. Canned food label of ingredients and expiry dates. Canned food should be checked for any leakage, any punctures, any swelling, rusting. The label of ingredients should be checked before, uh, best before dates, expiry dates, as well as the label of ingredients should be checked. And if the freshness of the food is questionable, it should be thrown away. Uh, voluntary disclosure of health. Now, by it should be done by workers in food industry and, and uh, will be handling who will be handling consumable foods. Improvement in personal hygiene practices of food handlers, training programs for food service workers of a minimum of 15 days, safe food handling instructions before the initial employment begins, and reward mechanism who before employees who uh, who strictly follow these uh, instructions. Uh, <clears throat> Now, uh, on this slide, I am showing uh, a pathogen food combination depending on the cost of illness and quality of life lost in years. More than 70% of the foodborne infection is caused by Campylobacter, uh, is due to uh, poultry. So 70% of this is due to poultry. So now Salmonella dominates the pathogen ranking, but it's spread, it spread over all these foods. Toxome plasma is the second leading cause of death due to foodborne illnesses according to CDC, but there has not been any attributable, attributable risk to any outbreak. Listeria is ranked third in outbreak, and but it has shown a declining trend since 2000, and 
the most common food that is involved is cheese. Uh, this slide shows uh, the ranking of foods in public health impact across pathogens. So uh, poultry is ranked first because of the disease uh, burden caused by both Salmonella and Campylobacter. Although complex foods cause twice as many illnesses as poultry, but still poultry because of the two organisms involved, it is number one. Now pork is at number three and it's mainly due to highly uncertain attribution of toxoplasma and produces at number four because it's likely highly associated with salmonella and norovirus and many other viruses. And after that, you can see beef, dairy, daily food and seafood. In this uh, food, uh, in this slide, I'm going to show you all the outbreaks that happened in 2020. Uh, so the first three are the E. coli, E. coli strain one, two, and three. Now, uh, you can see in, slide, in the E. coli outbreak one, uh, both Tenimura and Romaine lettuce, which were tested by the Michigan Department of Agriculture, all the packages of the Romaine lettuce were recalled. Uh, then in strain two, E. coli two, the, um, there was unknown source, it was not uh, found out, and in strain three, uh, the outbreak is still under investigation. Then Listeria monocytogen is caused by deli meat, Salmonella, three species caused by wood mushrooms, peaches, and onion. Cyclospora has been implicated in bagged salad. And Listeria was uh, inoki mushrooms and E. coli again with clover sprouts. sprouts. Now, uh, food break, uh, illness outbreak response. Now, the health, uh, the first uh, thing that uh, kicks in the first uh, various mechanisms that kick in the first one is the local health department the healthcare providers first identify the cause of illness by doing an appropriate clinical and lab evaluation then the department of public health they gather officials who then identify and control the outbreak and prevent more people from getting sick the united states food and drug administration a coordinated outbreak response and evaluation group that is the core group was created to manage uh, the outbreak surveillance and post-response activities related to its stem. FDA uh, brought together expertise in medicine, public health and science to coordinate its effort to stop and prevent food box illnesses. Uh, and they work in collaboration with CDC, FDA and other state agencies. The team reviews sampling results, past inspections, distribution and sourcing information. Uh, Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Uh, they serve as a lead coordinator to detect, uh, to detect outbreaks, define its size, and identify the source of uh, the disease of the outbreak. It has three main uh, roles, quickly detect outbreaks, gather evidence linking the outbreak to a likely food source, and communicate the findings uh, to the consumer and the retailers. Uh, United States Department of Agriculture, it protects the public by ensuring the safety of meat, poultry, and processed egg products. And uh, FoodNet is a project uh, among FSIS, CDC, and FDA to identify, control, and prevent foodborne diseases. It usually uh, serves as a sentinel site in various states to provide accurate estimates of the burden and source of specific foodborne diseases. And that's the conclusion of uh, my uh, presentation. I hope you understood and uh, we're able to understand uh, the football illness, uh, the common agents. Thanks a lot and have a good day. Thank you.